Hey folks, welcome back. It's day 10 of basic design. Uh, we finally finished the black and white squares project and we're, be, we're moving on. So we've covered so far senses of how do we get people's attention? How do we direct their eye? How do we keep them focused on our compositions? How do we balance our compositions? Again, speaking to the fact that not all compositions need to be balanced, but balance is a great way to get that level of like the feel of how a composition can attract human beings eyes and how they can make them feel comfortable um so what we're doing is we're kind of separating all of the uh we've, we've kind of talked about the basic elements dots shapes lines we haven't gotten to color yet because it's it's a very uh powerful element and we've started thinking about some principles things like direction balance um now what we're going to be looking at is something that it, it, you won't see this in most basic courses um, <clears throat> but I think it's, I think it's necessary at this point, and that is modes of representation. Uh, what we, the, a, a good way to think about this is how do you make focal points that are interesting to look at and that are expressive of different ideas? Because for a, a great example would be if I say the word fire, if I say fire, 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 like how I say it changes the meaning. So when I say modes of representation, you can think of that like modes of speaking, ways in which a violin is played, how you represent yourself, your, your social media profile. These are all modes of representation that get across different aspects. And so you can present the same thing in a different way and it'll mean something different. So in the conceptually, like what we're getting at in the realm of design is how each object, how, like we're, we're We've, we've kind of, we're constantly zooming in and zooming out, zooming in and zooming out. So we're zooming in on focal points right now. How do we make interesting visual forms that will hold our attention and express different ideas in different ways? Um, I'll, I'll link to a great video on this that I do show to my class. It's another nerd writer video. He has some great video essays. You should, you should subscribe to him um, and me subscribe, like, uh, comment, um, there, I did. I, I generally don't do that, but that's what you're supposed to do. Um, it's on Rowan Atkinson, Rowan Atkinson's uh, physical comedy. So it'll be linked up a, up above somewhere, and I'll put it in the description. But Rowan Atkinson is a really interesting actor, and especially in his stage performances. And Nerd Writer makes a great argument, suggesting it's not that Rowan Atkinson tells funny jokes. It's not that he comes up with novel situations. You know, like a stand-up comedian. It's that he figures out ways to do normal things in funny ways. I think the best in, in his, in his uh, video, there's a, a example of Rowan Atkinson, I think from the movie Love Actually, where he's a high-end candy store person. I, I, don't, I don't know what they're called. And he's scooping candies into a bag and he flicks his wrist as the candies fall and does it with this you know, air of sophistication and it's funny. And it's because of the mode of representation, the way he characterizes in that video, it's called attitude. That's a great way to think about this. You can, you can say something, but you can have your attitude as well. If you're married, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's all about what was that attitude that I just received there? I know you said the nice thing, but you said it like you didn't really mean it or something like that. And we can do this visually with all sorts of things. So uh, I'm going to share my screen here for a moment and transition over to here. Uh, we, I've got some broad categories that help students think through um, what these modes can be or a way to describe for a variety of modes. I have four in general. You'll see a fifth one that's a catch-all because by no means do these are these hard and fast categories. These aren't scientific categories. These are general um, familial categories for those of you who are wanting precision. Um, so something can be displayed in a graphic manner, a detailed representation of an object, but one that aligns with the historic definition of the graphic arts. That's a little thing to, that I, I talk about why we're working in the visual arts in particular, that these design, this broadly design thinking works through a lot of realms, but one of the easiest ways to learn it is in 2D. If you think about my structure of building blocks, basic building blocks, all of this applies in every single realm of the second dimension, the third dimension, and the fourth dimension, maybe the fifth, who knows. Uh, but that 
as soon as you add a dimension, you add another layer of complexity. So because this is a basic course, starting with two dimensions is a great way to start. Uh, and I tie this into the rest of the curriculum here at Hope College where we're talking about graphic arts and, and whatnot. Uh, so I won't go into all that right now, but one, one great representation of this is the presidents or the other uh, important historic figures on the American dollar bill. What that is, is a graphic representation. And what I mean by that, you'll see when we get to the next one, which is simple representations, it is very hard to mistake George Washington. There is enough detail in there that it's not even, it's not like man or white man, or it's not some general category, like say the depiction of a man on a restroom sign. It's like, wh who is that even? You know, like it's just, it's just like, masculinity something like that like it's just general whereas this is highly specific if you mistook george washington for abraham lincoln you would have a problem especially when you were going to pay obviously there are other signifiers that are helping us figure out exactly what is a value but if you thought that you were giving them a abraham lincoln five dollar bill instead of a one dollar bill you'd be in trouble and that's the point of those graphic representations is there's a specificity that gets in there. The next mode of representation would be simple. A simple representation of an object has as few details as possible. You can see that this makes it more recognizable. Like if you think of a dollar bill in your mind, you probably think of a cartoon version with like, maybe he's got little curls and maybe he's facing to the right. And you, know, you can kind of make out the simple forms, but by no means can you copy all of the hatching that is on a dollar bill. Um, the hatch marks, the lines from the etching process. Um, so this is a representation that gets rid of his, it shows an object or for, a visual form in as few details as possible. Uh, the greatest example here are gonna be logos. Logos are constantly doing this more so these days um, for a variety of reasons, but one of them is speed of processing. Simple logos are more readily, through. if you think through the steps of our visual processing again, locating yourself in space, categorizing objects, and deriving meaning. Simple objects are way easier to categorize, and so you, you get it faster. So when it comes to logos and whatnot, they want you to recognize and interpret their logo faster because in many situations where it's displayed, you are rushed or you are making quick decisions, and so you are looking for common things. This is It's altogether a great strategy for marketing and for a point of sale type situation because when you're on your toes, when you're not taking your time, you are largely working off of intuition, and intuition errs towards uh, conservatism in the sense of like getting something you recognize. It's very rare you'll even see like when people travel why do they go to you know hard rock cafe in tokyo because there's a little sense of like normally when you make a dinner decision it does not take that long then you travel abroad and every single restaurant decision is much more complex and sometimes especially near the end of your trip or the beginning of your trip you just don't have the bandwidth you need something simple and there it is hard rock cafe in tokyo and it's like I know what that's going to be like. I'm not going to be confused, all of that. So you can see simple representations definitely have a huge place in especially the commercial world, let alone on your phones. So that's why everyone's everyone's dance moves on TikTok are so simple. Gestural. This one's hard for people to conceptualize if they haven't been in especially drawing classes, but it, it's, a, it's a, a visual form that captures the essence of the object and the energy of the line used to depict the object. So uh, generally, they're very organic and quickly made. I, what I do to get students to understand this is I give them charcoal, and I have them, they have their insect image on the computer in front of them, and then they spend five minutes and they draw it as best they can. You get like some, some really nice drawings, but uh, they definitely don't seem to have very much energy. It's more like the student is fighting the charcoal because I like giving them weird chunks, so it's hard. Um, and, you know, so they struggle with that. Then we do a four-minute drawing. Then we do a two minute drawing, then a one minute drawing, then a 30 second drawing, then, or a 45 second, then a 30 second, 15 second, 10 second, five second, three second, and then we get down to a one second. Um, and what you're getting there, you're, you're feeling the movement and the charcoal and the way that it interacts with the paper leaves a mark that tells the story, so to speak, of that arm movement. Um, so it's capturing an energy 
and you can also see this like a great, you know, I asked for examples as we're explaining this to students and um, a great one is always a motion blur or like speed lines, especially in comics and and uh, cartoons and whatnot. It's like you have a still image of a character. Oh, you can't really see me. I'm so small. Uh, it's like, how do you get it's like you draw lines coming off of them. It's like those lines aren't real. That doesn't happen when we move. Um, what that is, is it's trying to communicate the energy through a mark that carries with it that energy. So you get these fast wiggly lines and things like that, all kinds of the stylization you'll see in different types of mediums. Um, and so that's what we talk about gestural. It also, it relates to the sense of like, you know, like, like we're, <laughs> we're in a time of politics here in America right now. And so, you know, you see people, they're gesturing. What are they trying to do? What are they, how these things, the way they move their hands, it expresses an idea. You can see this in theater in particular, you know, to be or not to be, that is way like you can you get a sense like he's he's grasping at the air. Why? Because he's gesturing in a grasp for the air or he's holding the skull out in front of him at arm's length, considering life and death. You know, like the gesture carries the energy, further emphasizes the point of the message. Um, what else do we have? Radical. This is where I like to have a lot of fun, but these are extreme stylizations of an object to the brink of recognition. So textures, patterns, morphing, strange phenomena can occur. Um, you'll see this like in, in the two thousands, the MTV logo used to always be animated with like these crazy stylizations, things where it come together where like, or break apart where you kind of recognize the logo. And then it, you know, is radically stylized cartoons frequently are a great example. Sometimes cartoons are simple. So the, the current cultural reference points that, uh, students constantly use would be diary of a wimpy kid. Look it up. It's like stick figures. Um, I like to point out, but sim a similar level of detail would be a show like South Park, but the stylization drastically changes. So I would say Diary of Wimpy Kid is largely a simple representation of human forms, whereas South Park is oft often, even though it is simple, what brings more meaning to South Park is its stylization, not just how simple it is, but the kinds of things that they uh, tend the details they highlight are extremely crass and you know obviously it's like the most successful show i think ever like the me most seasons it's insane so like these these different f forms of representing things kind of catch most things that can be visually represented um i i leave a, a open category that we don't work on on this day but we talk about when uh they turn in when they turn in a uh, their first, their first step, the first critique of this project, we talk about an ideal representation because though these are large, broad categories, I don't think they necessarily cover everything and they don't cover like actual mixes because you could have like a, you know, a chimera is what I would call it, but you could have like the head of your animal being highly detailed and then you could have a stylized body coming off of this. You know, there's all kinds of very strange ways where you combine, can combine these where you can get the benefits of all, maybe, you know, maybe you could make one that has all four um, and you can get the benefits of those in, in varying degrees. So that's what the the ideal thing is, is after. Um, I want to show like some examples to get at um, what I'm looking for here. Uh, <clears throat> oh, of course, of course it just won't go full screen. Here we go. Um, so, as we're, I often will go through a series of logos to get at these and just ask the students. And this isn't like there's a right or wrong answer necessarily. Some people perceive different images in different ways. And so, you know, in case people aren't aware, you can see right here, it's a basketball. You know, we get some like, it's not a graphic representation, that's for sure. It doesn't have very many details. In fact, look, it's missing like the entire outline on the top section. Uh, so some people are like, well, it's simple. But then, you know, you kind of look, you see, like, there is, like, this line that has some roughness in it. It also has this arrow. And so, like, maybe it's gestural. Maybe it's um, radical. I always like to ask, imagine this is a logo for something. Is this a logo for, you know, um, I don't know who makes basketballs these days, but, like, back in my day, it was, like, Wilson. Is this the logo Wilson would use for their official NBA basketball, basketball. It's always like, no, no. It's like, why? 
well, it's either not simple enough or it's not, you know, detailed enough to get kind of like, we are the foundation of basketball. We are strong. You can rely on our ball. I'm like, okay, what if this was, you know, could you imagine this being like a kid's basketball sports camp? Everyone's like, yeah, it's like that up arrow, you know, it's like, I don't know, shooting up or aiming high, you know, like uh, whatever, whatever cliche name for something like that. You look at something like this, the butler's pantry. It's definitely got elements of simplicity. You know, it does have a lot of details, but they're not specific. This isn't like, oh, I know that guy. That's Jeeves or whatever the butler is, you know. Uh, I think the stylization, the movement of the line, the way in which his hand is rendered, the feet, all of it kind of gets across. Like I like to ask students, you know, what do you think the price point of this place is based on this logo? You know, it's... It's going to be more expensive than like a Red Robin, probably not as expensive as like a Michelin star restaurant. It feels like trying to get at Michelin star quality, but in a more casual way. Uh, you know, I'd put it at like these days, God knows, you know, $80, $90 or something uh, per plate. Got another one here. Again, very simple. Is the lack of details giving it more meaning or is the stylization of the nine lives reincarnated f furniture i think they're trying to go for the stylization with this one they're trying to get some sense of uh sleek chic and elegant and so they do that by making a cat that is that and it kind of you know mimics a table in different ways let's uh let's go to this i like this one this is clearly graphic but then there's like the lasso that's a star that isn't realistic. It's like, what gives it more weight? Uh, frequently these days, you know, back when I first started teaching, this was less regular. But nowadays, you know, as I'm going through these, students will start Googling on their phones, like, what is the Dallas Cafe? Because I like to ask the question, of, okay, what do you expect this place to be? They're going to serve you an espresso and a latte and like a real friend. It's like, no, no one thinks that. And you know, when they they're using cafe, not in the European sense of cafe, most likely. They're like, this is going to be barbecue. It's going to be in the South, probably Texas. Uh, it's, you know, probably going to be casual. It's not a gourmet restaurant. It's like, what does the star mean? You know, what does that get at? And that's where I think you kind of have a divide because it's doing both of them. This would be like why we have the ideal category. But there's some degree where it's like, uh, maybe they do, you know, Friday night dance nights there. Something like that. Like, I think that's what the star is getting at. That there's that stylization makes it feel more like it's for young people, less like it's for families, you know? Um, here's a great one. I love doing this one too. I think this is a pretty graphic representation, even though you can also see the stylization. The stylization doesn't, to me, seem to draw it towards anything. I'm not like, oh, that's a, you know, outdoor, you know, I, I, don't, I can't even think of, I can't even think of a style that this would like be, you know, it's, it's like a sharp edged vector style from the two thousands like that, you know, we've all seen this kind of thing. It doesn't seem to like bear any specific meaning rather the details, you know, it's a raccoon skin hat. It's a bearded man. He's looking forward. We can't quite see exactly who he is, but we know it's outdoorsy. This one I love looking up. You should try to Google this, figure out this company is, you know, we always talk about what the logo seems to be. This company is not whatever you think it is. Very strange. Um, let's take a look at some more. You know, there, there's all kinds of these. We can go on and on. This is a fun one too. Like, it's the it's a graphic representation. You know, there's a simple representation. Hammers and love. Very kind of strange. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if we've covered all of them. You know, some more gestural examples. How the mark itself. This is a type of water. This isn't like a, a nice Fiji, you know, Fiji distilled mineral water or something like that. It's like, this is like messy. I don't know, you know, this is the way an artist thinks of water. Comma police, nice simple rendition of a comma as a whistle. You know, this is, this is what I mean to get at these, at these ideas. Um, so we talk about these in order to explore ways in which we can represent our forms. And then, and specifically, they're going to be working with their insects. So then we do a bunch of exercises where they explore and start making these as well. Um, but that's the, that's like the next stage is, you know, thinking about 
how can we morph and change and make something specifically in a manner that will uh, bring about a, the, the kind of meaning we're looking for. And these categories are nice because you can, you know, you want to, you want to take something that is recognizable and everyone understands and you want to frame it in a new way that is very different than what we see, use a radical representation of it, make it strange again. You know, you want something to be quick, easily uh, understood because you're designing, you know, street signs for highways, make them simple. You want something to be really specific. You've got a very important point that you need to communicate and you can't let any of the, the nuances get lost. Do it in a graphic way like this. Like I'm making graphic videos. I'm trying to explain in detail why studio classes are valuable and why you might want to take one and why it's hard to simplify it down to an online thing like online universities are going to do a lot of great things i don't think they're going to get this very well it's very you know you miss a lot if you're hopefully you're imagining my students working for an hour or so with me in the room we're talking about things we're looking at things constantly seeing these examples you get to see the things change in front of you it's super super important um and then gestural, you know, you want like, you want to get across the feel of something. You want to get across a, a person's energy. You want to, you know, highlight like some, uh, something that is very hard to state explicitly, or maybe even dies when you state it explicitly. You know, like when, when I describe Rowan Atkinson and I use explicit words to try to be like, and then at three seconds in, he does this, it's like, eh. That is not you need the gesture you need to actually see the action and so that's what the, that's what those are all for um and then of course there's the ideal in order to mix them but we'll get that later so that's day 10 uh have a good weekend